So I'm here at St Margaret's Lock under Arthur's seat and there are loads of swans here seem to spend all their time here. They've moved over a little bit because people are feeding them over there. So I'll start my drawing. I have prepared some paper, so it's just white cartridge paper, and I got some black or maybe dark brown watercolour yesterday and I just covered the page. See, this is not very neat, um, so it's fine to put it on roughly. And that now is something I can draw onto, a dark page I'm going to draw with some charcoal, some willow charcoal and some white chalk to start. And I think I'm going to do a couple of drawings while I'm here. I want to draw the scene, which I quite like, because I see up here we've got the ruins of is it St. Margaret's Chapel up here. And then I've got the far side of the, the lock over there. And then down here, there's a lot of lock, and I'm going to make it a bit smaller because I would like to get some of the swans in. So these swans are very exciting to draw because they won't stay still. So I'll talk a little bit about ways of drawing them uh, as they move around. But I think that's what I want to draw. I don't know how well that's come out, but let me make it a bit stronger now. So I did all of that with lines because I wanted to work out where things were and I wanted to work out what to include but as well as lines and this might make it a little bit easier for you to see I hope we've got some Arthur's seat over there with snow but because I'm on dark paper as well as uh, the lines is that gonna come out? I'll get a little bit of chalk on just to make the chapel a bit clearer. A bit clearer for you, also a bit clearer for me. Got some windows. Just very busy here with birds. Seagulls and swans. But I want to work with the swans and because they're moving around, maybe that makes me feel it's okay to put them in different places. I should feel it's okay anyway, because I am an artist, and artists don't just draw things exactly as they are. They arrange things in such a way to make them as interesting as possible. And because these swans are all swimming around, I'm going to take the, the views of the swans that I like best. So you know swans have got incredibly long necks. There's also quite a curve at the top of their neck. So sometimes their necks go straight up, sometimes they're at a bit of an angle. I hope that is appearing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show, show you some different ways of drawing the swans in my, in my scene with the lock around them. And I'll also... Um, do some studies of swans. So I've done a black outline and now I'm looking at them again and I'm going to fill in with some white but I'm not going to put thick white everywhere because when I look at these swans it's really the tops of their backs and maybe one side of their neck looks a bit lighter. So if, if I put the chalk on very thickly where they're very white and not so thickly where they're not white, then the paint that I put down underneath will show through and that'll make them a bit darker. Here we go, and I've got lots of swans to work with. So I'll just try, I'll try another one over here using the same, the same approach, which is to put down some lines. And some of that swan is hidden behind the next one. We'll maybe get some swans with their, um, with their wings open. And also I think there are probably young swans here as well, so they're, they're not quite as white. 
So I might get some other colours out. So that's only um, working a bit with the white and the and the, the, the grey, the, the, the grey charcoal. Another way that I could draw these ones, now there's some facing the other way, which I like the look of. I'm going to use the side of the chalk. So I want to get, there's one with its head in the water. So I'll get the angle of its neck like that. And then it's back. So I hope you can see that. That's just using the side of the chalk, just to get me a, a rough idea of the sorts of shapes that they make when they've got their head in the water. And then I can draw into that if I want with, with my black, if I want to make things a bit more definite. And then really I need to get on with some beaks, don't I, because there's some colour in there. So let me pick a few colours. So they've got a very red-orange beak. Maybe something a bit like that. And that's virtually a red I've put there. And then they've got the black behind the beak. Um, so I should put that aside. And then, as I said, there's quite a few young ones. So maybe I'll get a little bit of brown into this one here. Maybe a slightly darker brown. There's some of those young ones. They aren't quite as, they look as though they're not very clean. So that's a little bit of work with the swans. And now I'd also like to get some, some sort of colour into the water. Which is hard to decide. I think the water's really a kind of grey. So let's see what have I got. Grey wise, I've got my charcoal, and I think there's a bit of green in it actually. So that's partly some reflections. Maybe I should start with that. I'll get back to the hill first and get a bit of green up there. I'm doing this because I want to work out what colours to put in the water so that I can draw around my swans and get something of their... Yeah, to find them. I did some really messy lines around the edge and it would be quite nice to have something a little bit more um, clear about their edges. They're such elegant birds. I want to make sure that they're, I make, I portray them as elegant. So I'm trying, just trying to get some colours up here, mixing some of the pastel on top. So I think, I think I'm going to make this water a little bit darker first. So when I do the water, the water's got ice on it. When I do the water, I make all these lines go across the page. Because that's a bit like the sort of ripples of the water. And there's ice there, which I think is just going to be a kind of patchy grey. I'm just trying to see whether these swans have reflections. I'm very close to the bottom of my page. I'll have to put some further up so I can work with that. Let's see, actually, there's one here, just appeared, a young one. So these are near to me, so they're going to be bigger. This one is a bit further away, and it's young. Well, I think the young are kind of the same size. And it's got its head coming back. Doing some pruning. And then when I look, at its reflections, it has got just a dark reflection. So I'm putting down some of the horizontal marks in charcoal. So basically what I tend to do is the dark, I do the dark first, and then I'm going to put some light on. 
so it might be, this is a bit grey, I don't know if it'll look any different from the white. Let's see if I can get some of the look of the ice. I think that the sky isn't really blue. I wouldn't mind a tiny bit of colour up there. Put a little bit of colour up in the sky and then that makes you think I should put a little bit of colour into this bit of the water. So I want to get some of that around these swans, don't I? So I'm putting the, as well as those horizontal marks, on the water's surface, I'm also putting a bit of a green, I'm going to smudge that a bit. And so I want some colours for the, <coughs> the young swan, that's over here. I think they have brown beaks actually. Something a little bit lighter. Yeah. So far then. I'm fairly happy with I'm happy with this one. That one's more alive. That's interesting because that's the one that I did without any outlines. I don't like the outlines on these. So I think I'd like to get rid of them now. I'll get a little bit more of the chalk in. And I think I probably need another colour for the water. This looks like a duck. So let's see, let's get something different. Let's try to lift up these colours a little bit. That's quite helpful and I'll maybe get a little bit of yellow into the, into the grass. A little bit lighter. It's funny because I, I didn't do anything to the swans, but I did do something to the, the, the sky and the, um, the hills. Right, some beaks. So I think now I've really got to start looking at swans properly. And getting a bit of colour. And see, that's a better swan. This one is too thick at the top. So I can still, I can work with my rubber, my razor, I can take things off. It's a bit better with its thin neck. I think it's got too long a beak, like a duck. So I think you really should, if you're not happy with a bit of drawing, you really want to look and work out what's wrong. It's not always obvious. Of course, swans, their eyes and their beaks are kind of attached, aren't they? There's that sort of dark shape around their eyes, which is why that one works. It's got that little bit of black left over there. So, nearly there with this one, I think. And I might just try something slightly different. I think we've got a bit of light over here. In the sky. Should try some of that. That does actually help lightening the water. So I don't know if my colour is quite true for um, the water, but that certainly helped me make my swans stand out. So I think I'll do a different one, and this time I'll just do some studies. 
office ones. So take that one off. Another page underneath. And for example, I could be planning, you could do this, to do a painting or another picture of this scene. But I might need a lot more birds, and I might want to have them facing in lots of different directions. So, I could have another page like this. And instead of thinking about the whole scene, I can just concentrate on the swans and draw, maybe draw them a bit bigger. So there's a whole load of them coming down here now. Somebody's got some food and they're all heading towards us. And when you see them from that view, they're back and their body is behind and actually with a lot of them their their neck is quite dark so I'm just doing all of that with the charcoal and I like charcoal because if if you're not sure about what you've done it's very easy to change so I want to get that view they have all turned around and gone the other way now I want to get that view with the dark neck and my light body just behind. And I find it often, if I work on a dark page, it's easier to get things wrong and not worry about it. So they change direction, but let's say that this is what he was doing. Just coming towards me like that. And I presume. Yes, have a look. There's a bit of a light down there on that side. And then maybe I should make that mix the charcoal and the chalk so that's a bit grayer. some of my colours. And actually the chalk and the chalk is really nice to mix them. And I'm trying to mix them now to get some of the textures of the feathers. And get a little colour on the beak. One of the ones coming towards me. Let's see if I can get some other some other swan antics. And maybe as I did before, I should start with the side of the, the side of the chalk. So some of them are doing this amazing thing with their Head low down. So they make something like that shape. And you see, I'm not really sure exactly what what to do with that or, or, or what's going on. But now that I've got that shape, I can look at them again and maybe draw into that with my charcoal. Decide, right, that's, that's where the head is. Although he was cleaning, was cleaning its side a bit more. I wouldn't need its head. Head needs to be right in, into its side. Like that. Anyway, you can see it's very easy to put on the chalk, change it with the charcoal. And 
mix it so that you get some of the textures of the feathers. And also, you know, just take it up with, off with the rubber. So in all that, I quite like what's happened with the, um, the brown paper that I started with, or the grey paper. Right, so get a bit of uh, this one that's cleaning itself. The other thing I can see now, which is really nice, is just a kind of pattern of the ripples of the water. It's quite random. But you see, when I put it round my swans, it does actually help them look more convincing. So let's get this one a little bit more sorted out. And then up on the reflection. Well, the reflection of is obviously is the same shape, isn't it? I'll get some of that and just put a little bit. So those are just chalk pastels, and I think it's good to mix them with charcoal. And if they have to be changed, you know, if they have to be altered or made not so dark. So although this this bird isn't in this position anymore, I'm just looking at other other swans. I'm trying to see. I can work out what's what's missing, like the way the neck attaches to the body, it's not quite there yet. In fact, there seems to be a bit of a lump there, and then a slightly... The body's a bit further back. So I might, might not need that bit. I'll take it off. See, I can really play around with it. It's something to do with attaching the neck to the body and also just making sure it's in the water. And I just like the water. Some of these dark patterns that I've put on, when I look, I think there's just a bit of green. It's a kind of muddy green. Something lighter in between, and then I think I might be done. Think about this. That's just a grey. So I didn't do quite as many studies, and I've ended up making a picture here. I wasn't planning to to necessarily put these together. Instead, I was really hoping to show you how you might um, just have like a, a page covered with different birds and do as I did, perhaps, which is to start one bird and then it moves so you can't, you can't do any more to it and you go to a different one. Uh, and then with those studies, you could set out your scene, like I did there. And it may be that some of these birds could also go into a composition like that. So I would have, if I'd thought about it more carefully, I would have done more, um, more of a variety of views. So this one's coming towards me, that one's cleaning itself, have others going the other way. Every now and then you see them flap their wings, which is slightly exciting and scary. So that would have been a nice thing to include. Anyway, there you go. There's a project you might want to try. Um, maybe the scene, uh, or as well as that, build up some 
sketches of the different swans and build up a, a kind of group of them. And I used some paper that I prepared with watercolour, let it dry, and I've drawn on top with charcoal and chalk pastels. Okay. If you do anything um, along these lines, I'd love to see it. And as I've said, I'm probably going to set up a page on Facebook where people could um, put their own drawings, because I'm sure you'd like to see what other people have produced as well. All right. Bye-bye.